I thought you might be interested in hearing from Chris Waller because I know he's a dear friend of yours. Yeah. I've never heard him so excited about a horse. This is what he said yesterday morning when Nature Strip came back from track work. Chris, all good? Yeah, really good. Really good. Yes, safely good. Can you well. How good? Shuey How was wrapped with him the other day, Saturday, and James very happy. He's going great. He's in. He's tip top form. Tip top. He's ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> you know, Lord and Lady. A lovely man. We, we never saw that with Winx because he was no. always so terribly concerned that she was going to eventually lose a race, and of course she didn't. But, uh, but it's great to see him enjoying Nature Strip and the big adventure that that horse and Home Affairs, the young colt, are going to take him on. They're going to go over to England, try to beat the world's best in the King's Stand, a Group 1 race over 1,000 metres, and then what is now the Platinum Jubilee. We've had the Gold, we've had the Diamond, now the Platinum Jubilee sprint over 1,200 metres. Schwarzier won them both. And he told me that there is a slight chance Nature Strip will attempt to do yeah. the double as well. And just on the Chris Waller stable, very elegant, won't be going to France for the Arc de Triomphe. And he'll prepare her, the Melbourne Cup winner, for the spring campaign. I think that's right, isn't it? I, I think so. Look, it'll be interesting to see what Very Elegant does because it does take a lot out of the very best horses and there's no arguing she's right up there uh, when they run and win a Melbourne Cup. It's very hard to get them going again and I think he's erring on the side of conservative nature there. Yeah, it's also very hard to take your horse to the other side of the world and win, isn't it? It is. Very difficult. I mean, the whole settling in period, they're going to leave early in June with Nature Strip and Home Affairs hit and run mission, bring them both back for the Everest. Yeah, just on Nature Strip, by the way, Nature Strip will have a 900 metre barrier trial at Rose Hill tomorrow. Cam? Yes, indeed. Now, Alan, I, look, I know that you've got, uh, you know, a, a, a broad knowledge of football, but how much would you pay for the shirt that Maradona wore in 1986 when he knocked England out of the quarterfinals of the World Cup. No the idea. Hand of God shirt. No he idea. He said later after this infamous goal that it was partially the hand of God and partially the head of Maradona. But I don't think there was any head involved at all because it's all, Mar it's all the hand of God. <laughs> of course, he scored another brilliant goal. Argentina wins 2-1 and it nearly ignited the Falklands War all over again. Yes. And how much? Twelve and a half million dollars. It's the most expensive piece of memorabilia ever for auctioned. For a shirt. And the windfall goes to the bloke that no one knows his name anymore. He was playing for England. He just happened to swap shirts with Maradona on the day. He <laughs> kept it. Oh, now he's a very, very wealthy man. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was this auctioned? Uh, just today. It Just today. So it's, it's one of those stories that I think resonates with a lot of people because Maradona had one of the most amazing careers, as you know. Hang on. You've said it too quickly. Twelve and a half million for a soccer shirt. For a soccer shirt, still slightly sweaty, and and with a with a number on the back that runs in the what rain. They just used a glitter sort of glue to put the numbers on. Maradona said later, if it rains, we won't know who we are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've made your debut on the program, Cam, and you've been outstanding. Well, Thank you so much. There he is, Cameron Williams, and we'll see you next week, Cam. See you next week, Alan. Cameron Williams.